Welcome back to the BigML tutorial series. In this video, we will be learning about ensembles, one of the most powerful and popular techniques in supervised machine learning. To begin, we'll explain what an ensemble is and how it differs from a single tree or logistic regression model. Next, we'll talk about how to create a BigML ensemble in a single click. After this, we'll explore BigML's visualization for ensembles, the partial dependency plot, as well as the field importance report and how to interpret it. We'll then talk about some of the parameters you can change when creating ensembles and how those parameters affect the nature of the created ensemble. In an earlier video, we discussed BigML's default model, the decision tree. By machine learning standards, decision trees are considered weak classifiers, in the sense that their predictions are typically less accurate than other more powerful types of classifier. Part of the reason for this is the form of the classifier itself. As discussed in our previous tutorials, decision trees work by splitting the data into subsets, using the questions represented by each node. After splitting the data several times, we're often left at the leaf node, with just a few points on which to base our final prediction. Because the final prediction is based on so little data, it can sometimes be unreliable. One way to fix this problem is by using ensembles of trees, or more specifically, techniques called bagging or random decision forests. The central idea behind all of these techniques is to choose several datasets or bags from the original dataset. A bag is just a random sample of the instances in the original dataset. We then learn a different tree on each of these subsamples. Because the subsamples are different, the structures of the learned trees will also be different. To predict the objective for a new instance, a prediction is made with each tree, and these predictions are voted together to get the final combined prediction. Because the prediction is based on the leaf nodes of many trees, it is based on more data and therefore tends to be more reliable than the predictions of any individual tree. Let's try creating an ensemble. Here, we're again using the diabetes diagnosis dataset, where the goal is to predict diabetes based on physiological attributes of a patient as well as the results of blood tests. We can select one-click ensemble under the cloud action icon in the resource view to create the ensemble. Because the ensemble has many trees, looking at the node-by-node -node visualization of a single tree doesn't give us a good sense of what the model's prediction will be for a given instance. As such, the default view for an ensemble is a partial dependency plot. This shows a colored XY plot where the color indicates the model's prediction and the brightness indicates the strength of that prediction. Choosing probability weighted versus plurality weighted at the top of the plot causes the votes of each tree in the ensemble to be weighted by how confident that tree is in its prediction. This can help smooth out variations in the prediction across the plot area. For this diabetes model, we see a plot with plasma glucose, or blood sugar, on the x-axis, and BMI on the y-axis. The blue areas in the plot indicate a negative diagnosis, and the orange areas indicate a positive diagnosis. We can change the variables on each axis using drop-down lists near the plot area. For people with normal blood sugar, the effect of having a higher BMI is to lower the probability that they do not have diabetes. For people with a normal BMI, Increased blood sugar levels eventually lead to a positive diabetes diagnosis, but only with a low strength. However, people with both a high BMI and high blood sugar receive a high confidence diagnosis of diabetes. By default, all of the fields that are not on either axis of the plot are treated as missing values. The menu at the lower right allows you to change the value of one or more of these fields and see how this changes the plot. We can use this to see that as a person gets older, their overall risk of diabetes generally increases, and the model's prediction switches from false to true at lower levels of BMI and blood sugar. Another interesting piece of information available in this view is the field importance for the ensemble. 
You can view it by clicking the clipboard icon at the upper right, which gives the ensemble summary report. Opening this menu shows a bar graph that represents the relative importance of each field in the model's predictions. In this case, we see that plasma glucose is nearly twice as important to the model as the next most important field, BMI. Finally, if you want to see the traditional model view for any of the trees in the ensemble, you can use the model list view that is selectable at the top left. Here you can see a list of the models in your ensemble. Clicking on any of the models brings you to the individual decision tree view. Next, we'll discuss a few things that you can do that may improve your model's performance. The individual tree parameters are still available, and so setting balance objective and missing splits to appropriate values may still be helpful, as explained in the Models 2 tutorial. For ensembles, we will also highlight two other parameters, number of models and randomize. As you will see, there are many other parameters available, and these are explained fully in the BigML dashboard documentation. Remember, the strength of an ensemble is in its diversity. If all of its models were the same, its predictions would be no better than that of a single tree. If you have a single, powerfully predictive field in your data, your trees may all use that field heavily, and this may make the ensemble technique less effective. It also leaves the ensemble vulnerable to sudden changes in that one field. A typical symptom of this problem is that one field is far more important than all others in the field importance graph discussed earlier. One way to combat this lack of diversity is via the randomize parameter. This parameter ensures that different trees do not use the same set of splits over and over by banning certain types of questions at each level of the tree. This forces the tree to choose other fields on which to split and increases the diversity of the ensemble. The other side of the ensemble equation is the number of models parameter. Increasing this parameter creates more trees in the ensemble, and so amplifies the smoothing effect of the voting process. Generally, learning more models sometimes produces a more accurate classifier, and almost never produces a worse one. The trade-off is that the resulting ensemble is larger, and so may take more time to make predictions. Let's create a model with some of these parameters changed from their defaults. We can do this by opening the Gears menu in the Dataset Resource view and selecting Configure Ensemble. At the top level menu, we see controls for the number of models. We'll leave this as the default value for now. Under the Advanced Configuration panel, we see a number of subpanels pertaining to the possible options for model training. Under the Tree subpanel, we see the Missing Splits option, as well as the Randomize option discussed earlier. Let's enable that option. Under the Weights subpanel, we see the option for balancing the objective field just as it is with individual models. As this dataset is somewhat imbalanced, we'll enable that option as well. With these options selected, let's create the ensemble. Going to the Ensemble Summary report again, we see that the difference between the importance of plasma glucose and the next most important field is significantly smaller, indicating that the ensemble as a whole is less reliant on that field and more robust to changes in that field's value. In summary, we learned in this video about ensembles, a powerful technique to make individual trees into a more accurate classifier. We saw the default visualization used for ensembles, the partial dependency plot, and how to use it to explore your ensemble. We then discussed the field importance graph and how to use the ensemble parameters to ensure that no one field dominates your model's predictions.